is a revenge story right here. Yeah, both of these players have got to be thinking about that last set going into it. Kamex knows that, like, got a really clutch game three, and it's definitely not, like, a free win by any means. So probably going to be, and also knows that Frozen, she's going to be wanting vengeance. So got to, there's a lot of mental stuff outside of the match going yeah. into this. Now, this match in particular, I was watching it, you know, <laughs> you know, in the corner, and the spacing that Kamex had was so fantastic. There were, one thing is how he was just, felt like he was always out of range, and the other, his use of rolls. Really pay attention to the fact that he's using rolls to, you know, you know, for a character as fast as Sonic, it seems like a, a sub, like a sub, you know, movement option. But at least in that first set, it was working out well. That time around, he actually kind of gets punished for the roll. Not directly, but... Mm, oh. A little preemptive right there. And that could have been such a vital chance to grow your lead. So definitely not something you want to throw away. And like you're saying with the roll, is Pyro and Mithra, they're, both of them love landing with like specific aerials. Mithra mostly with that dare. Or Pyro mostly with that dare. Mithra mostly with like Nair. So using rolls can be like just an invincible way to get out of that zone and potentially whiff punish with the speed of Sonic. Oh my no. god. <laughs> You, you can't tell me you didn't think he was dead. <laughs> uh, part of me did, but good DI. I, I think that that move, like the crunch in of it, makes it seem deceptively strong. In reality, I mean, it's obviously really strong, but it's not <laughs> that crazy. That's what you pay for when you uh, when you buy a DLC character, the crunch of the hit. All right now, Frozen, she wants one big crunchy sword hit to take this Kamek stock and be such a nice lead if you could take this right now. All right, now, whenever Frozen goes... Oh, that was actually really unfortunate. Um, whenever Frozen goes and Mithra at these higher percents, number one thing she's looking for is up smash. Uh, not a lot of kill options available to... Yeah, like okay, you see right there, two of them in place. And I mean, I definitely understand why, but the scoop and the nice, long-lasting part of it, it can be a really good answer, but... Wow! Right there, it was so tricky because if you air dodge, I'm not sure if you had enough time to make it back. So it was just a super tough spot to be in once the jump was extended. Kamex realizing that, punching it, and this could be a dead Mithra. No, not quite. Good high recovery. I mean, it might not be a dead Mithra, but look at how dire things are looking for Frozen. Only 38%, but this is the situation exactly that Kamex loves to be in, where his opponent is hungry for the kill. Look at how many moves Frozen is just throwing out there. Oh. Down air enough to do it on its own. No need to combo it into a finish I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> Down air just killing. Right there. Nair is going to be such an important tool from Pyra in this matchup, or Mithra in this matchup, sorry, uh, because it can stuff out spin dash, but beautiful stuff. That was incredible! So the way that Mithra, if I'm, unless, unless I'm wrong, the way that Mithra side B works is that you are able to, she kind of just actually, even though she's zooming all over the place, her hurt box just like moves forward in a straight mm. line. And he went underneath, came up and actually hit her out of that. That was fantastic. Great stuff to Kamex, turning that game one around and it's currently up 1-0. Yeah, that's going to be frustrating for Frozen. The first uh, stock, she did that side B that could not make it back, uh, which is basically an SD. And right here, she had such a nice lead and then had like one string get her gimped. Um, so it was like oh, yeah. also the exact same stage position, a sort of exact same kind of edge guard that got. Oh, we have the character swap. The I classic. Mean, it makes sense if you think about the last three games these two have played. Uh, Kamek says one. I believe. I believe that Frozen took game one uh, when they played it winners. So definitely Kamek figured out what what he needs to be doing in that matchup. So throw him a curveball. You know, Frozen is a very stellar Palatina as well. So let's see how this is actually going to pan out. Yeah, before Pyra and Mithra were ever there, she and Palatina were main. Or she main Palatina. So um, good stuff. I, I really respect this switch. I think a huge factor in this switch was how much Kamex was gain a read on the recoveries. Um, it seemed like she, uh, Frozen, she got edge guard every stock, basically. So switching to a character that, well, for the most part is a better recovery, Ooh. but it is not better when Kamex is willing to go so deep reading an early up B. Beautiful yeah. stuff. It's also worth mentioning, Kamex is warmed up in this matchup. 
Jen was the one who knocked him into losers in the first place. So this is not something that is uh, foreign to him. It's fresh in his mind. And right now, things going very even between the two of them. But at the same time, just based on the way that Kamek's been playing, the way that he slowly figures out the timings of his opponent, I feel like... Ooh, I feel like as this match drags on, he's going to crack that part of Frozen open more and more and more. I could definitely see that with Kamek's adaptation, but, um, you know, from getting edge guard so early, Frozen did manage to take a percent lead, so I think she's showing a, a ability to not be, like, to not let a bad interaction get to her. Um, definitely keep fighting, you know, because you have to keep fighting against Sonic. Once you give up, it's over. I will say that the disadvantage from Kamek's right now is looking so, so good. You know, these big caught moves from Frozen are just getting micro-spaced around and Kamex is punishing them optimally. He was like, he's really not getting trapped at the ledge, trapped at the corner, none of that. And if you're not able to do that, that means you're going to have to be getting your damage raw against Sonic and Neutral, which is a tall order to say the least. Yeah, I mean, Kamex, honestly, straight up just camping right now and it's working. So opting to just stay on one side of the stage and charge spin dash, it becomes such a mix-up of when you're going to release it. But, hey, Frozen got one opening and she managed to take the stock, so definitely Fro showing her stripes. Frozen definitely watched that set between Kamex and, uh, and Jen earlier. Jen was throwing out that up smash at the ledge, and it worked out very well for him. So she's able to recreate that success for her own. 156%. This is pretty dangerous if you're frozen, but at the same time, you have a decent amount of rage, and those combos that you can manage off of a single neutral or something like that can put a large gap between the two of you. Beautiful stuff reading the air dodge away, and I feel like that explosive flame right there just like speaks the story of how much uh, Frozen's really adjusting, uh, starting to get a read on Kamex to be able to go for something that bald. This neutral right now. These two are playing. But Frozen picking their opportunities in order to go in and actually land hits. Yeah, it's it's become like oh okay. <laughs> it's uh, Kamex was really like playing the super spin dash heavy game where um he would just go back and forth across the stage and be totally fine, but when you have a you know 60% deficit, Frozen does not care. And wow, that is a beautiful, uh, I don't know if it was a read because it covered two options, but a really smart option uh, to go for that down smash. I mean, it did cover a lot there. It covered, well also did, correct me wrong, no legend invincibility, correct? Yeah, no legend invincibility. So charging that down smash, the most popular options, if you do uh, re-grab ledge without invincibility, are going to be either jump, attack or roll um and two of those. because you can buffer those and two of those options we're gonna get killed by uh, the down smash so i definitely agree with that and um let's see if kamex will get double eliminated by paul tanner or if he'll, or if he'll find something i like the town city switch you know almost i mean i don't think kamex has gotten a single kill off the top this uh set you know, these really deep fares off the of spin dash or really good bears with edge guarding. It's just going to be all the more valuable and the more space on top of it. Huge. Not only that, but this stage has an FD variant. It's not there all the time, but whenever it is, you basically have what is widely regarded to be Sonic's one of, one of his, if not his best stage that he normally doesn't get to play on because it just gets banned. Can't ban all three FDs, though. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh! Oh, wow. Oh, oh. The charge just put his controller down for a second. Let him charge up. Took a sip of the Coke. <gasps> oh, I can't not believe that that forward air missed. And at 108%, this is actually getting really rough for Frozen. Frozen, who's looking so good in that last game, now kind of being pushed to the ledge here. Forward tilt, not enough to actually do it. But we do have trapped at the ledge continuously. And the back airs, look at that. Really, Kamix is trying to find that finishing blow and a dash attack whiffed right in his face. Doesn't actually get Frozen killed. Yeah, oh, it, such a good back air. We saw right there, you know, it's not like Kamix instantly got the killing move. He went for a lot of stuff. 
that maybe would be punishable, but he was so slippery with how he moved after going for a, a aerial that he was able to just evade all of Frozen's attempts at counterplay. Oof, a beautiful Ooh. jump, Reed. Yeah, it doesn't matter if the uh, the top blast on on Tannen City is slightly larger. It's not going to be big enough to survive you from an up air at that percentage. But Kamex with a bit of a percent lead. Let's see if he can do anything. Ah, man, he's been getting out of the corner so easily, whereas whenever Frozen is put there, she has to go through a Herculean effort to find her way out. Look at that! No chance! And that's Town City coming in clutch right there. I mean, such a massive stage. He was able to be on the entirely other side and whiff punish with that fair. That's just the strength of Sonic. Every single one being illustrated. What stage was that? We can see what stage was that. Smashville was banned. Smashville, I... yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, looking at the way that this town and city pick is uh, is panning out, I think that that was maybe not the right band for this matchup. Oh boy, it's Frozen already on her last stock. It's just been lapped in percentage. Can't even get dragged down there combos. Kamix is just too slippery. The timings are just so erratic that Frozen can't seem to find these big openings. Even a dash attack and some good damage, a little bit of stage positioning, but... Oh, okay. I like the idea of switching to explosive flames, though. Oh, and right there, Frozen knew that Kamex was once again going to land into Spin Dash. Went for a grab trying to read it, but um, it did not matter because of just how good that move is. Able to take it out before even landing. I'd say we've seen Kamex, you know, got punished so much for coming off aggressive from ledge, from under a platform, and was getting caught by these Palutena F smashes, but now he's just staying there. He's not really giving Frozen much to work with. It feels like so much of this game at this point is just, it's a game, of, it's, they're just playing chicken over and over again. These spin dashes just being charged right in the middle of the stage, Frozen running at it and sort of who's going to balk first. And so far Kamex has been uh, just getting so much damage off of those interactions. Yeah, a neat thing about this like charging spin dash is, uh, oh, beautiful explosive flame right there, but someone's uh, kind of natural re a way to avoid it would be jumping over, but at least right there, you can jump with the spin dash and get the hitbox out in the air. So Kamex has been able to catch pretty much every way uh, Frozen's been um, trying to contest it, but a really preemptive dash attack was going to be able to stop that. Now there's some momentum. Can she ride with this? Okay, yeah, that explosive flame had been working out a lot better when Kamex was starting to hang back more, but changing up the style. Look at this, just being a lot more aggressive right now, but it, it changes on a whim. You never know which actual approach he's going to take, whether it's going to be going, closing the distance in an instance or just hanging back like that. The mix-up game is just too strong, and there's no way that Frozen is going to survive that forward air that deep. And that's going to be Kamex moving on into loser semis, where now he faces me. What beautiful gameplay from Kamex, really. Just the, uh, the way he's been able to like be in these high-pressure like game three scenarios versus really good players like Frozen, like Jen, and completely hold his own. Um, definitely or I think this is like the rise of a really good player in New York like I can see next season him getting PR the way he's been playing I mean listen he's